While Zelda fans are clinging to the hope that Breath of the Wild 2 is a 2020 game, a new Zelda clone was confirmed for the Nintendo Switch today with a fall 2020 release and you should be excited for it. And a new Nintendo Direct leak has the internet buzzing with some very specific details, but should you buy into the hype? What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So while many Nintendo fans are hopeful that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 could still potentially be a 2020 game, I don't think it's going to be. At the best case scenario, I think The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 will be a spring 2021 game, sort of coinciding with The Legend of Zelda 35th anniversary. But all because that game isn't coming out on the Nintendo Switch doesn't mean that Zelda fans don't have anything to look forward to. Of course, Windbound is coming out at the end of this month, and I think that game shows a lot of promise. It looks like Breath of the wild mixed with a bit of uh, wind waker in it so i think that game looks really cool but another game is now confirmed for the nintendo switch that literally looks like a legend of zelda game but you know what that's okay because i think this game looks spectacular and the game is ocean horn 2 knights of the lost realm now ocean horn 2 knights of the lost realm is confirmed for the nintendo switch and it will be releasing this fall as stated by the developer of the game now if ocean horn sounds familiar it should because the first ocean horn game ocean horn monster of the Uncharted Seas originally came out on the Nintendo Switch in 2017 and really this was a very Zelda like experience with a top-down aesthetic. Now, Oceanhorn 2, however, greatly expands upon the Legend of Zelda formula and is definitely more along the lines of an Ocarina of Time or a Breath of the Wild with a huge, vast, large open world that you explore. Now, this game originally released on the Apple Arcade as an exclusive for that platform, probably meaning Apple ponied up a good bit of money for it, but now the game is getting a proper release on the Nintendo Switch because, well, I mean, who really cares about Apple Arcade? When was the last time you heard someone talk about Apple Arcade? Because I know it's been quite a while since I have. Now the developer has stated that this game is being optimized for the Nintendo Switch, so hopefully that will include the 60 frames per second mode that was being added into the Apple Arcade version of the game. Now the Apple Arcade version of the game was also announced to be getting content expansions, and those look like they will be making the joint now the Apple Arcade version was also announced to be getting content expansions for the game and that looks like it will be joining the Nintendo Switch version of the game. Now the trailer that you're seeing right now is actually for the Nintendo Switch version of the game and I have watched this trailer a ton of times and honestly I'm already in love with this game. I thought the first Ocean Horn was really good but Ocean Horn 2 Knights of the Lost Realm looks like a proper Zelda game like even down to the main character looks like Link but you know what that's okay. The combat looks extremely fun with both sword and gunplay. The world that you're in seems very alive and taming with all sorts of fun stuff to find. And I think that this game is going to be absolutely spectacular and I cannot wait to play it on my Nintendo Switch. I hope they do like a physical version of this game because it's heralded as one of the best games on the Apple Arcade, the killer app for the Apple Arcade. And since the game is getting optimized for the Nintendo Switch, I think this game is going to be absolutely fantastic. They've improved the visuals, they've improved the combat system. I think this game is going to be an absolute hit so yes it might suck that the legend of zelda breath of the wild 2 probably isn't coming out in 2020 but now you have windbound and now you have ocean horn 2 knights of the lost realm and i think that's really going to fit a great slot for zelda fans and i think this game is going to be a huge sleeper hit on the nintendo switch hopefully we get a concrete release date soon but fall 2020 cannot come soon enough for me and finally, Nintendo Directs. Do you remember those? Because, well, I, I, I don't think Nintendo really does. Sure, we've gotten some Nintendo Direct related things in 2020. We've gotten game specific Nintendo Directs. We, of course, have gotten mini Directs, third party Directs, but a full on large Nintendo Direct presentation. Well, we haven't seen one of those since September of 2019. Nearly a year ago was the last time we learned about a bunch of games coming to the Nintendo Switch. But of course, there is the rumor circulating that something is going to happen with Nintendo between August 11th and August 22nd. This of course coming to us from Jeff Grubb's summer game mess lineup of things where he basically talks about events that are going to be happening. This was actually a wild card that was then positioned between August 11th and August 22nd. So a lot of people feel that something is going to happen during this time frame. I think something will happen. I'm not quite sure the scale of it, but now there's a new Nintendo Direct leak that's been hitting the internet and a lot of people are looking at this and thinking that this could potentially be legit. Now, as always, I say take this with a grain of salt, but there there are some very interesting and very specific things that are on this Nintendo Direct League that made me think, you know what, I think this is worth talking about. Whether it's true or not, 
not, I guess we'll find out very soon, but there are some interesting things that are circulating from this. Now, the origin of this Nintendo Direct leak is from 4chan, so a lot of people automatically say, 4chan, and, and, and you know what, usually I do think you are right by saying that. However, you have to remember something. Before the Nintendo Switch was officially unveiled, the Nintendo Switch presentation was completely outlined by some random person on 4chan. I have a picture of it up right here, and you can see all of these games were confirmed for the Nintendo Switch. All of these games were in that initial Nintendo Switch presentation. So to just simply write off 4chan, I don't think is necessarily fair. Now, like I said, take all of this with a grain of salt, but there was some interesting things that I saw from this direct leak that made me say, you know what, let's talk about it. So supposedly this event will be happening on August 20th, which of course is in between the August 11th and August 22nd rumored date for a Nintendo related thing. Now we're not gonna go over all of the things from this presentation leak because there's a lot of things, just sort of the things that sort of caught my eye and made me think, you know what, maybe there is some legitimacy to this. That supposedly this event will open for a trailer with Super Mario All-Stars 2, the Super Mario 35th Anniversary Collection. This will contain Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy Remastered and will be releasing on August, and will be releasing on November 20th. Now, of course, everyone has been talking about the Super Mario 35th anniversary, and I do think that this is actually something that's going to happen. Now, the latest things we have heard is that Super Mario 3D World from the Wii U is going to be included in this, but of course, it's going to be a separate game as Super Mario 3D World Deluxe. So this is pretty much right in line with the rumors that we have heard about the Super Mario 35th anniversary collection. Now, maybe that's just playing it safe. Of course, the uh, November 20th release date is very specific. I think that sort of makes sense because of the fact that Pikmin 3 is going to be a late October release, but interesting stuff here. Supposedly, an Animal Crossing Fall update is going to be talked about for October, and Nintendo crossover items are going to be back, showing off the Mario set for the Mario 35th anniversary stuff. And you know what? If they bring in Nintendo items again into Animal Crossing, I might actually pick up that game. Yes, I am not one of the 22 million plus people who have purchased Animal Crossing, but I always thought that was a very cool facet of the game. So if they included that back in, I probably would jump into this. Apex Legends will be coming to the Nintendo Switch in September. Now, of course, Apex Legends has already been confirmed by EA to be coming to the Nintendo Switch, and I think a September release date sort of makes sense. They said it would probably be a fall 2020 release, so a September release date does make sense for me. Here's one thing that really caught my eye, though, because this was something of a game that I have never heard of, and then when I researched it a bit, I found out that there's actually some merit to this game, and it's a game called Gonesia, I believe it's pronounced, by Dangan Entertainment. It is a new indie game that looks like a visual novel that will supposedly be coming out in December of 2020. Now what's interesting about this besides being oddly specific is the fact that this game actually does exist. It released on the PlayStation Vita and the Switch as an indie visual novel that IGN of Japan really seemed to enjoy. So this game could be potentially getting localized for the Nintendo Switch in the West and like that's just such a random thing. Like why would you pull that out of your hat if that was going to be a game that would be announced in this presentation? So oddly specific things like this always catch my eye in these Nintendo Direct leaks and Nintendo Direct rumors. Bravely Default 2 is supposedly now a winter 2021 game. A special demo will launch before the release and your progress will carry over. And I think that's very interesting because of the fact that Bravely Default 2 was supposedly a 2020 game as the last that we have heard of it. But even when you look at what Square Enix is doing, like look at Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, that game got delayed a bunch of times. And I feel like that there is the potential for Bravely Default 2 to potentially get delayed to a 2021 release date. Winter does seem a bit far away. Way. But like I said, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles ended up getting a ton of delays, so I guess it's not outside the realm of possibility. Tomodachi Life, my friend collection, will be coming to the Nintendo Switch supposedly on October 9th, and that's kind of a game that I think is interesting because Tomodachi Life was actually pretty fun on the 3DS, and I thought it was weird that they sort of abandoned it. So could a new Tomodachi Life be coming? I mean, maybe. Pokemon Snap 2 will get a spotlight presentation and will get a release date of December 4th. Now, that is definitely a game that I feel is a 2020 release. I feel like what they showed from that game looked like a very polished presentation, so I wouldn't be super surprised if this is a 2020 game it did say that the game was coming soon so a lot of people anticipated a 2020 release so maybe 
One thing I found very interesting was that the supposedly the Nintendo Switch Online service will be getting an update. According to this, Game Boy is coming to the Nintendo Switch Online on September 10th with 20 games that will be adding in a lot of Super Nintendo and Game Boy Mario games for the anniversary, which I think they are going to be adding more Mario games to the service for the 35th anniversary. But Game Boy is definitely a situation where I'm not quite sure if Nintendo is going to do that. I feel like Nintendo will just go past the Game Boy and do the Game Boy Advance instead of the Game Boy. So this is something that kind of sticks out to me a bit like a sore thumb. Obviously, last year we got the Super Nintendo games added to the service, so people are feeling that a new console could be added. And Game Boy does make sense, but I'm just not quite sure that Game Boy games on the Nintendo Switch would look, you know, all that great. They would obviously have to do some filters on it and stuff to make it look nice and sharp, but it would be interesting to see. There's some third-party games talked about. Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition from Capcom supposedly is coming on October 13th. No More Heroes 3 is a January 2021 game and the game is displayed in a very strange manner. Watch Dogs is coming to the Nintendo Switch later on in the year. Actually, it specifies that it's the first Watch Dogs, which, I mean, that's perfect in Lee aligned with what Ubisoft does. Just release your old games on the Nintendo Switch. Atlas supposedly is bringing a bunch of games to the Nintendo Switch in 2021, including Odin Sphere and Muramasa, which that would be absolutely awesome. The Plants vs. Zombies game coming to us from EA is supposedly coming in December. A The World Ends With You sequel project is in development for the Nintendo Switch. A Pokemon Crown Tundra spotlight is given with a November release date. Of course, that is the upcoming Pokemon DLC. There's supposedly going to be a sizzle reel talking about third-party games, some of them including Doom Eternal with an October 20th release date. Supposedly, that game is still coming out in 2020. And Fast and Furious Crossroads is coming because... I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. It is Bandai Namco. And finally, the presentation will end with a Smash Fighter Pack 7 announcement, that being Crash Bandicoot. Now, of course, we talked yesterday about Crash Bandicoot 4 on the channel, and I said that I did not feel that the game was necessarily confirmed for the Nintendo Switch just because of the source code in the website. If you didn't watch that video, and you probably didn't watch that video because it didn't really get all that great of views, make sure you watch that video, though, because we sort of go over this. But what I find interesting about this is that the person stating this leak clearly states that there is no mention of Crash Bandicoot 4 anywhere. So they're just sort of announcing Crash as this new character. He will be coming out in September 2020 and they don't mention Crash Bandicoot 4. And you know what? That's one of the reasons I sort of like this leak because I don't think Crash Bandicoot 4 is coming to the Nintendo Switch anytime soon. It'll probably come out if it does come out in 2021, probably around the fall or something. It seems like that's what Activision likes to do. Basically wait a year with their games and then bring them over to the Nintendo to switch like we saw with the crash insane trilogy and the spiral reignited trilogy so overall there is some other stuff included in this list i'll have a link to it in the description box down below but what do i think about it i think it's interesting because there are some very specific things here that sort of are just completely out of left field that i don't think anyone would necessarily just make up out of the blue but i mean i guess they could to sort of give legitimacy to their list as always you have to take these things with a grain of salt obviously this would be a great lineup for the nintendo switch though this would really bolster 2020 bolster 2021 make for a very exciting time lots of cool games talked about in this thing but i'm just not quite sure i'm ready to go all in on this i do hope nintendo does do something between august 11th and august 22nd and i do think that they will but will it be this full-on nintendo direct presentation i mean probably not but it is fun to speculate about all right, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. Are you excited for Oceanhorn 2? Because really you should be. This game looks absolutely fantastic. And this Nintendo Direct leak. Are you buying into it? Do you think that there's some legitimacy to it? Are some of these claims going to come to fruition? Or is Nintendo just giving up on 2020? And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.